Hi, this is Medievalist.net, and we're in Boston for the Haskins Conference. And while we were in Boston, I decided to pay a visit to a friend who makes incredible Renaissance and medieval leatherwork. So this is Jessica Crusoe Reynolds of Emporium Custom Leathers, and she's going to talk to us today a little bit about what she does and how she does it. So I guess my first question would be is... How does one get into it and like did you just one day decide, hey, I'm, you know, did somebody show this to you at a Ren Fair and you, you took an interest or, or how did that kind of... That's a good question. I actually um, went to school for costume design um, in college and um, didn't wind up finishing that, went in a totally different direction, uh, had a regular day job and um, a, through a friend of a friend, uh, I was looking for an outlet, I loved the Renaissance fairs, I was always drawn to that genre to begin with, and, and um, through a friend of a friend, I actually was put in contact with the woman who actually taught me, so she actually owned a booth at the, the New York Renaissance Fair, which is one of the largest uh, Renaissance fairs on the East Coast, and I apprenticed with her for about five or six years. Um, just summer it was seasonal and I would do work on the in, in the winter and um, when she wanted to get out of the business she sold the business to me so I've been operating it on my own for the last five years I think so I've been doing it for a total of 11 years Wow it's it's incredible and and if you look at the work here you can see it's there's an incredible amount of detail and I'm um, just wondering for like different pieces how long um, do pieces take, or is it just a dependent male, female, or um, armor, not, or, you know? It, yeah, I know what you mean. <coughs> it, it depends on the piece, uh, it depends on the complexity, and what's involved in the making of it, because 90% um, of what I do is hand done, so very little of it, li as little to, as possible, I try to use like a machine to do. Um, all of the grommets and the punches and holes, everything, rivets, is all set by hand. There are a couple of pieces that, I'll, that you'll see um, that do have some hand, some um, machine sewing, like a regular sewing machine. Uh, and that's mostly for constructional purposes. Not to keep it together, basically to, I'm not, I'm not explaining this very well. <laughs> a little nervous. Um, it's mainly to keep it from coming up, right. so it's it's more aesthetic than anything else. Um, you know, I do a lot of work with um, gluing edges down or finishing edges, and then I'll go back and I'll do the hand, the machine sewing afterwards, just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. So very very little of what I do is done on the sewing machine. So, so for the most part, most of the pieces that you make, like for example, like this, this vest, this is a woman's piece, mm -hmm. like that is all, um, just show everybody this, this yeah. is incredible. So this yeah. is all... This is actually one of the pieces that is more heavily machine shown because it is um, reversible. Mm -hmm. um, so what it is, is it's two layers of suede, two different colors of suede, so that you could literally unlace this, flip it inside out, and have a different piece. Um, so that's more of a modern touch to a, a classic um, design. But this is actually an old folkwear pattern. I think it's from oh, the Czech Republic. or I don't remember what it was called back then, but it was from the Czech Eastern, Europe. Eastern Europe. yeah. And um, it is a folkwear pattern. It was actually typically, I, I modernized it a little bit because the actual pattern went a little bit further down. This actually covers the bust line and the actual original design would go underneath the nipples, um, so for modesty's sake. Um, yeah, we, for we a put red it a little bit higher, and yeah. then it was a little bit shorter, so we made it for more long, long-waisted people. Um, but that is a, a female piece, and it does have detachable sleeves as well. And this is something that people would wear when they're doing the rent for a medieval fair. Yes, yes. Um, and that's made out of two layers of suede. The grommets and, and everything is all punched and set by hand as well. Um, so, and this piece was sort of an Italian Renaissance piece. This is a yes. male? That is a male piece. Uh, typically worn above a shirt and below um, a robe. Um, depending on which time period you're looking at, but this is the Italian style. The Italian style has five panels. So actually there would have been a third, two more panels back here. It would have been um, uh, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would have been seven pieces. This one I made into five. Um, I didn't need to waste um, the time doing the back pieces because the way I cut the leather actually um, followed the pattern. Um, but it would come in panels. So you would have a um, panel here that's adjustable, a panel here that's adjustable, two more panels in the back, and then those two panels there. So it was adjustable. A lot of times people did not have a lot of money um, and um, things were passed down. If they were still in good shape, they needed to fit a lot of body types. Um, and if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have a lot of money, you really kind of had to use what right. you had. So things were very adjustable at that point. Also, um, they were also pretty flashy when it came to um, different styles. And these panels could typically be changed out with different colors to coordinate. That's so so awesome. um, if somebody, if their, if their um, companion uh, was going to some sort of function, and that person happened to be wearing red and green, they might possibly do the main swap red color out. and then swap out the sides and the backs with a green panel. It's a nice one. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, this is uh, quite an incredible piece of work. <laughs> this, uh, and, and the thickness of it, how thick is this? That is a, that's a nine ounce and that's actually um, not too heavy. It will go all the way up to 14 or 16 ounce, which is almost like a shoe leather, the bottom of the shoe of a shoe. Um, they used to use which you could actually take a blow in. At you that could point. take a blow. I mean, it is leather. It is a, an organic material. So whatever you would wear that had leather over it, that would not be the only layer that you wore. So you would have some sort of chainmail underneath or over it. Um, if you wanted to make it harder, you would boil it, which makes it almost rock, almost like a plastic, pla uh, rock hard. Um, or what you could do is. Um, just heat it up. It would mo mainly it would be boiling. Um, I don't typically boil it because it does tend to shrink it, mm -hmm. so um, it makes it less expandable for what I'm doing. Um, but this is actually there is no machinery used on this piece at all. Everything here, every single thing that you see put on here was done by hand. Um, the way it was done. Yep, back at it that started time. out as and all of these pieces actually started out as literally a, sh a hide of leather, a sheet, a big sheet of leather, either suede or a latigo. This is a latigo. It's a pre dyed. Um, color, um, but there are some that, like this one here, this is what an undyed, right. this is actually what undyed leather looks like, it's just a flesh color, can you see that? Um, and what you would do is uh, you would do whatever you're going to do with it and then you would dye it um, with uh, an indelible dye and then seal it and wax it, buff it out. And um, so in order to cut some corners, I got a, an actual pre-dyed piece. That's a 9 ounce. I typically work in 7 ounce. Um, 9 ounce is a little... Show. Yeah, it's more for show. Really Most of the people who go into China. Renaissance fairs um, don't typically know the difference um, in the leather. And they're not usually going to go out and be crazy enough, as some of us are, to uh, go and actually try and get hit. Um, so it's it's mainly for show. For decorative. Right, right. but there purposes. are people who are members of the SCA, um, Society of Anachronism, who, who will say, yes. I need it to be um, combat worthy, and it needs to be uh, even thicker than that. It needs to be about a 14 ounce. It's quite thick. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about really, like, quarter of an inch. I don't you, you guys do metric, but it's like a quarter yeah. of an inch. <laughs> so like this thick. Right. Yeah. Um, of the three type of pieces, like what... What would be the most time consuming, that the armor type material or the more intricate, flashier, you know, what's, what do you find takes the most time to create? Um, each one has its own challenges. Right. Um, I actually find that the, the clothing portion as opposed to the armor portion is a little bit more time consuming, in, in, unless I get into the fantasy pieces, which I do have some fantasy pieces for women. Um, but. Um, a lot of this stuff is, is you see these um, this leather over here literally has to be um, glued down so that it um, shift when I'm going back and sewing it. So I literally have to sit there and make sure it's all even, glue it, wait for it to dry, and then sew it down uh, just to finish the edges. That's the way that I do them. Right. Um, I could go further and instead of um, just doing those basically a leather bias binding, I could do it uh, lined, but then that would take up more fabric and would actually be less period correct because I didn't typically do that. Right. 
Um, what Renaissance fairs or medieval fairs do you attend regularly so people can find you? I know you're based locally here in Boston, but mm -hmm. like if uh, the, the people who do go to these, where, where, what are the ones you frequent the most? Right now, the only one that I've been at for the past 11 years has been the New York Renaissance Fair, right. which is in Tuxedo, New York. It's upstate from New York City, about an hour out of New York City. Um, I'm actually from that area. I moved up to Boston about three years ago. And um, I was taking a look at some of the ones in this area, but um, they weren't really very feasible for me to do. So I'm focusing more on the New York Renaissance Fair and trying to get that one. We have a pretty big following there. Uh, we also do sword sheets and, um, you know, little armor, arm guards, bracers, um, and a little bit of, type. yeah, a little bit of, um, I have half arms and full arms and there's a whole host of things I'm putting up on my website, um, we do do a little bit of fetish, but yeah. very it's a family show, so we pretty, we pretty much don't get into that too much. And I do do custom orders, but a lot of my custom orders at fair happen to be sword sheets. Um, right. And things and scabbards, things like that, uh, in, in addition to the armor. Um, where can people find you online if they want to uh, they, order? This is pretty long, but they can find me at www.emporium customleathers.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jess. This was fantastic. This is incredible work. I'm just uh, absolutely blown away, and thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Sure, no problem. Thanks, guys. Bye.